this beautiful morning, we are blessed to have Dr. Sonia as the speaker. <laughs> so, relax, open your ears and your heart for words that will take us beyond this moment. We'll give you insights into who we are and the journey we are on. Reverend Sonia. Good. Good morning. Good morning, morning and good Reverend. morning, everyone in the sanctuary and on the, help me, the World, World Wide, Wide Web. Web. We are just so happy for the privilege of continuing to worship in our beautiful sanctuary, looking outside and seeing all the lovely Ponciana in bloom and the Bougainvillea, and I'm not sure what those are that Ixorias, are all the Exorias. 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 It always blooms. It is not yeah. seasonal, and that's so fantastic. That's how our life should be, always blooming. And I want to thank Carol for this wonderful introduction to the service, taking us here, and for the beautiful words Beautiful words by Sandra. Oh my gosh. We took liberty with the song, but I am sure the original writer would be very pleased indeed, <laughs> right? Very pleased. So thank you again, Sandra. No, my talk this morning centers around life is a journey. Take the high road. Take the high road. I have been thinking a lot about journeys not because I intend to travel, not at all, but at this pivotal moment in my life, I can afford to look at where I am now in this life and be joyfully amazed. I find myself looking at my family with the sentiments expressed in the song from Movie, I think it's a musical, Fiddler on the Roof. Is this the little girl I carried? <laughs> Is this the little one? I changed from boy to one, right? I, I play. Yes, is this the little girl I carried? This little one at play. I don't remember growing older. When did they? Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought that was such a smart thing to say, and it is true. When we are there looking at our children and see how they're just growing and developing so fast, especially when we haven't seen them for a while, you say, oh, wow, when did this happen? <laughs> and it's all good. So whether we notice or not, time catches up with everyone. Life is a journey, and it is rich with milestones along the way. So much to experience, so much to learn. So much more to become. When I was a child, my father would take the family on rare trips to Kingston. You know, country people don't really like to come to town, you know, even though <laughs> they don't realize how, what a wonderful place it is, right? <laughs> I was then, and still in a sense, committed to being a country girl, a country town girl from St. Anne's Bay right by the sea, spent many hours gazing at the sea. But when there was a chance to come to Kingston, I looked forward to it. We looked forward to it, our family. And I, for those of you who are too young to remember, there were actually cars those days, and I had, my father had one of them, and it was not a little broken down car, it was a well-appointed, good-looking car. But the cars those days, you would go in front, stick in something looking like a crank, and you would crank it up, and then the car would right, until it started. You know, it, you found a nice throttle. And then when it started, we felt, oh, wow, great excitement, we're on our way. But the first time I traveled, little did I know what I was in for. The journey actually was four hours from St. <laughs> Anne's Bay to Kingston. 
and that didn't include the part where you went through Kingston itself, right? Four hours. Now, once you get that car going, you'd better not stop, right? Because you have to come out and do it again. So, what happened is that we would pause at intervals because guess what? People would feel sick. People would feel sick because we are going round and round. And if you think that the gorge road is winding now, trust me, you didn't know it those days. <laughs> really winding. And nobody had any chance to do anything else but wait and pray and remember where we were going. So although the journey itself was not pleasant, there were other words some people would have called it, but our eyes were on where we were going and we were so much in anticipation of arriving in the big city where we would get greater cake and we'd get Buster Manti backbone <laughs> and we would get <laughs> paradise plum and mint ball, right? And Asham eh? and Tamarind Ball. Asham and Juju, right, okay. <laughs> Town nice, man, because we didn't have those things in the country. We had to eat fruits, lots of fruits, right? Climb the tree, lots of fruits, but this was a treat. <laughs> so no, Jackal's gone? Oh, yes, Jackal's gone, yes, right. All the lovely things, you see? The Kingstonians and the Asham, the Kingstonians know all those things. They could eat it all the while, but we had to anticipate it. We would pass jackfruits and smell it, and my father said, no, no, we're not stopping. We have to keep going. So we went up in life, and then, well, the world went up in life as well, and we got another type of car where we didn't have to crank it up. But the journey was still there. The road was still there to be negotiated, right? The road had not changed, even though the vehicle had been upgraded. And then as the years pass, we noticed that the road got a little wider, a little better, but we said, yes, we would get to King a little faster. But guess what happened? The cars were driving faster, and you know what is the result of that. And then they had some big trucks now that could go on the road, and we had to crawl behind them. And in addition to crawling behind them, sometimes the vehicles would break down and when it would happen, we'd have a long pile up of traffic and we'd have to wait. So then again, journey. Things improved in a way, but they came with their own challenges. Isn't that a lot like life? Yes. A lot like life. Things all improving, but there's no promise that challenges will never go. The, the versions may change, but guess what? Eventually, I grow big now, right? And I can drive my own car. So wait, I can pace myself. And you know, when you're driving a your car, you don't feel so sick when you're driving your own car, right? No car sickness. So I thought, wonderful, no, yes. Now I can enjoy the journey. But guess what happened? Now I realize that you have to be negotiating around the corners. You have to be concentrating when you look down in the you see the steep gully? We're talking about, you know, Mount Diablo, right? I, oh, now I realize why they call it Mount Diablo, right? <laughs> and so I still, yes, I could see glimpses of, you know, the scenery. And it's not bad at all. Now that I'm not feeling sick, I can see. But I still was in trepidation. And then when I passed little narrow bridge now, flat bridge, and I had to drive over it and look in left and look in right, right? Ooh, right? Ah, so we get to town. But at all, every step of the way, guess what? We knew where we were going. We knew the purpose. Our eyes were on the end result at every time along the way. Isn't that how life is too? If we know where we are going, we can deal with these things that happen along the way. Even though sometimes we have to have a little pit stop for different reasons, we know that we are going to get there eventually. No, something wonderful happened more recently, which gave us the option of not having to go around the winding roads. We had what we call 
Guess what? A highway. They got highway. Jamaica have a highway. Highway. Straight, smooth, beautiful roads. A bit steep, right? But beautiful. What we are able to do now is take our eyes and look at things which we did not know existed. We were on the highway. And that is how life is too. When we are continuously elevating our own consciousness, Jamaica hadn't changed. It was there all the time. We just never saw it. Mm -hmm. But we gasp. So beautiful, so wonderful. And guess what? We could take it even further. No, you, we, had, we get bus. We have nuts for express. So we can sit in comfort. And we're even higher up than the car. So we can see even more things than we had seen before. Yes, indeed, life is a journey. And this, my continuous evolution in transportation, is parallel to our lives. It is parallel to our lives. We simply are growing. We grow ourselves in consciousness. And our environment is growing as well around us. And as it grows, yes, we learn to negotiate it. We learn to negotiate. You see, we are not promised that everything will always be smooth. Right at this time, our world, our church, our own lives in some ways, maybe going through personal journeys where we really have to fine tune the vehicle, right? And yes, crank up sometimes. Yes, Sandra, crank up. Because sometimes, uh, you know, so we crank up or we have the tools to crank up. We have the tools, we have the spiritual tools. We know it and we can talk about it later. The Science of Mind textbook teaches us that life has no beginning and no end. Life just is, period. What we are calling our life is our experience of the infinite, that which the Science of Mind textbook refers to as the thing itself, the thing. The thing because really, it doesn't have any gender or any description. It is how we experience it. It is our responsibility to allow it in and through. And the Master Jesus hinted at it in, in very simple words. He said of himself, the words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. And he went further. When his disciples sought to question him about where the Father, where God lived, he said the kingdom of God, well, God lives in the kingdom, is not something people will be able to see and point out. He was quite specific in his words. The kingdom of God is neither low here nor low there. The king's, uh, kingdom of God is within you. You would be surprised how many people have never heard that, you know. It is Luke 17, if you need verification, Luke 17, verse 21. Yes. The kingdom of God is neither low here nor low there. The kingdom of God is within you. Maybe if I was more aware of these messages when I was traveling along the road, I might have been able to get within and have a different experience. But I don't regret any of those experiences because when you look at the experiences in a different way as we should look at all the experiences that make us uncomfortable, guess what? We see them not as something that is there to hurt us, but something that we can learn from. The mind of God is some part, the mind of man is some part of the mind of God. There, it, it contains within itself unlimited possibilities of expansion 
and self-expression, Ernest Holmes. But to put it another way, we are all here to grow and we, know we have no excuse at all because we all have equal access to the divine attributes. Life itself as being alive, love as loving, light as being wise, light as clarity of thinking, light as intuition, power as being powerful, peace as peacefulness, harmony, tranquility, beauty as the beautiful, and orderliness, joy as joyfulness, happiness, excitement. No, we cannot count all the attributes of God. They are infinite, because God is infinite. But these are the ones that humans, we can access and relate to so easily and so quickly as we remember ourselves. Yes, the mind of God exists within us, the mind of man. So friends, we come fully stacked with majestic power. So why have we felt so inadequate at times? Why do we look at others and think they are so good at that or this and think, I wish I could? There is a saying, you cannot see the woods for the trees. The Collins Dictionary says, uses a statement to explain what is meant by it. it I think it's so self-explanatory, but let me just say, it means that when we say this of someone, it means that we are so involved in the details of something that we do not notice what is important about the whole, the thing as a whole. We do not realize sometimes that whatever we are looking at is just what we can see. But the vast infinite, take, take this for example, this is a good idea, just to go to the internet and just see there are images, video images of this that can take you to see the vastness of what is out there. We can't even see it is so infinitely vast. Take the time to look. Remember that when we were traveling, I was traveling on the road, I couldn't see anything else. I couldn't see, I was so absorbed in my self in the journey and that is how we are sometimes right it is possible for me and maybe others to spend an entire lifetime focused on just staying alive with little thought of why i am alive i have been given the choice to do just that to live to have the liberty as the rest of say and that is a gift of grace and it is nobody's business but my own. Mm. My own business to live it, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? Life, the life force within me will not allow me to stand still. It's going to ask me to crank up, right? And move on. Remember, life is a journey. And in a journey, there is no inaction. There might be the appearance of inaction but it is an opportunity for us to be still and know. And it is also an opportunity when we feel to be hampered to look at the event, the experience, and use it as an opportunity to learn. If you find yourself in bed for a couple of days, don't look at it on the negative side, right? <laughs> Just say, well, mm hmm right? But I beg you, please do not go around affirming I am tired, I want a break. Please, <laughs> you may get it, right? Just know, okay, that there is that within me that knows 
when to slow down and when to say yes to the opportunity to rest and have recreation. Rest and recreation are a very important part of wellness and wellness is essential to spiritual growth. So let me go back to the traveling history for an analogy. The inner journey, which is spiritual growth. The journey which, is an, individ which an individual makes, we are, we are able to enjoy even the vicissitudes of life. We need to enjoy everything, the ups and downs, whatever comes, because we have a certain knowing why we are here and that every experience is a part of the journey of life, growth, find reason to enjoy it. Every reason, even when it gets hot, I have to remind myself, oh, isn't it wonderful? In this country, we have sun almost every time and it rains only when we need it, right? So take the opportunity to train your mind, train our minds to see good in everything. You know, when I was a child, I did not travel by choice. I was told I was going to Kingston in my father's car, and I went. Now, as we grow up physically, right, as we grow up, we also grow up emotionally, psychologically. But yes, we are compelled to go spiritually. We are invited to go spiritually. So as we go along through the rough patches in the journey of life, some of us have challenges in the body. Some are going through emotional challenges. Some financial, some relationships. Some have lost loved ones through transition, death, right? Some are just tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired of what's going on in the country, in the world, in the family. And some even are puzzled and a little bit concerned, even in groups, in our groups, in the workplace, in church, are some just, hmm, right? <laughs> Want being impelled to do some work. Emmett Fox, New Thought author and motivational speaker and mystic, gives a little warning about how we use our minds. He says, most people who have a problem concentrate on the problem. They take it to bed with them. And they stay awake all night thinking it over. He says, let go of the problem. Rise above it. Need a little help? Here is it from me. From the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. When you go into your bed and you're half asleep and you can't come out with any really wise, wonderful, affirmative prayer, that is embedded in our consciousness, most of us in Christendom, right? Yes. Say it. And you can't say it anywhere and anytime, but it's important to say it when you're going to bed because what you go to bed with is what you are actually fixing into your memory in deep into the subconscious mind that you may have actually forgotten that you have put it there, but it is there and it is making you act according to what you have placed in there whether it is something wonderful you want to experience or something not so wonderful. So we are on the highway of consciousness when we allow our attention of higher consciousness to allow our attention to turn within to the kingdom of God and know that he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And we say in this church, in the science of mind, righteousness for his name's sake is when we use the mind, our mind, which is the mind of God within us to contemplate the nature of God and the presence of God as us, with us, and wherever we go. 
To do so is to take the metaphorical highway. Do you know that there are some people who prefer to take the old winding road because they say the highway costs too much? <laughs> Likewise, there are among us who cannot spare the cost of time to meditate in the mornings or even to make a quick prayer. Why? Too busy? Got to rush? Too much traffic? Can't be late? Yes. One of my favorite New Thought luminaries, again, Emmett Fox, in exhorting why we must take the proverbial highway, says, you are not happy because you are well. You are well because you are happy, right? You are not depressed because trouble has come to you. Trouble has come to you because you are depressed. You can change your thoughts and feelings, and then the outer things will come to correspond. Indeed, there is no other way of thinking, unquote. Friends, it is an absolute necessity for us to anchor ourselves in a consciousness of right useness. We are emerged in a collective consciousness of the human race, and we must play our part in refining it with our contribution of love and light to it. Prayer, meditation, affirmative thinking works towards that end. We cannot afford the luxury of joining our opinions of what is out there in the world of news with naysayers. Trust me, it is not easy, right, by human will. There is a multitude of opportunities to do so publicly and privately if you're not careful. So I say, each time we're tempted, go within. Be still and know the I am. Uh, an, an author unknown to me, Oliver Wendell Holmes, says, you must train yourself to turn in the direction that the light is shining. But you have to learn to recognize where the light is shining. I want to end on a really positive exhortation by one of, then again, I, I keep saying it because I really love this man, this luminary, Emmett Fox. It is a little long, but I prefer not to edit it. He personalizes the infinite in his words. As I read, right? I also remember, uh, Jesus said, the, again, remind you, the kingdom of God is neither low here nor low there. The kingdom of God is within man. Remember that. That is important. Neither low here nor low there. It is within man. And that is something which I use all the time for anyone who is embracing any challenges who come to me in another capacity. And at first, there, most of them are surprised. They had never heard it. But when they have confirmed it, it, ta it takes on a, something bigger for them, right? So here is Emmett Fox. He says, God is bigger than any problem. God in you is greater than any difficulty you have, any difficulty you have to meet. God cares for you more than it is possible for any human being to realize. God can help you in proportion to the degree to which you worship him. You worship God by really putting your trust in him instead of outer conditions or in fear or in depression or in seeming dangers and so forth. You worship God by recognizing his presence everywhere in all people and conditions that you meet and by praying regularly. You pray well when you pray with joy. So here, in closing, I am giving you, as a reminder, which you can use, as it is said, or you can make up your own, likewise, to use throughout the week, right? As an assignment. Hmm. <laughs> and it goes like this, I'm gonna read it first. I am a magnificent, powerful, wise, beautiful, alive being doing the very best I know how. And I'm going to break it down. I am a magnificent, powerful, wise. I am, I am a, a magnificent, magnificent powerful, powerful, wise, wise beautiful, human alive beautiful. human being. Beautiful, beautiful, alive, human, human being. being doing what? 
doing the best, the best I, can. I can. So guess what? We know the end of the journey never ends, right? Yeah. We just keep going. And meanwhile, we're not too hard on ourselves because we are doing the best we can. You are doing the best you can. We are doing the best we can. Each of you say, I am doing the best I can. Namaste. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Sonia. Thank you for <clears throat> taking us through, through that historical <laughs> journey from country to town. <laughs> As we journey from country to town in our own lives, utilizing the spiritual tools that we have within us and heading for that kingdom, which is in all of us, to which we all have access. Uh, and to use the events in our lives to encounter, to, to learn and to enjoy as we travel this path. Utilizing all those spiritual tools, <clears throat> meditation, prayer, affirmative thinking, and to know that we are doing the, the best, best we can. That's a nice, simple message that we can take with us as we go forward this week. Okay. Um